This is Conzi. He's taking a phone call. Hello, Conzi. You know who this is? Does this voice belong to a person? Conzi hasn't the slightest idea what to make of a voice he can't see. And here's Conzi responding to the caller over the phone. He is using an artificial lexigram, a type of language called Yurkish. To understand what's happening, I'm going to need to give some context. Primates are similar to humans. It wouldn't take a degree in primatology or anthropology to come to this conclusion. Or maybe not. Because of this perception of human adjacentness, it is not uncommon to ponder on the linguistic capacity of primates. Ernst von Glasersfeld, a philosopher, a professor of psychology at the University of Massachusetts at Amherst, pondered on this idea as well, after he created the term lexigram, a symbol that represents a word, idea, or thing. He then collaborated with a primatologist named Sue Savage Rumbaugh, who has three PhDs, two of these honorary, and is the first scientist to conduct language experiments with bonobos, to create a set of lexigrams to be utilized by Sue and her research at the Georgia State University and the Yerkes National Primate Center of Emory University. The collection of lexigrams would be named Yerkish, named after the Yerkes National Primate Center. Yerkish is composed of around 120 lexigrams. The primates, such as Kanzi, would utilize a board with the whole dictionary of Yerkish, connected to a keyboard that would play the English word for each Yerkish lexigram. You can see it in action here. There. Can you find onions? Onion? Good. Potato? Potato. Blueberries? Blueberry. How about good? Good. Good. That's right. Just go ahead and hit it. Good. Very good. Good. Yerkish was used in conjunction with multiple other systems by Sue to communicate with Kanzi and the other bonobos. They would use spoken English as well as photographs to communicate. Kanzi consistently scores better than 90% with such sets of pictures. A more rigorous test involves Kanzi wearing headphones, so only he can hear which picture is being requested. Hanzi, give Sue bananas. That's right. Hanzi, give Sue ice. That's right. Hanzi, give Sue pears. That's right. Hanzi, give Sue potatoes. Yerkish is more of a placeholder for English given that primates simply don't have the observed ability to produce consonants, which are vital in producing sentences. Sue will sometimes use Yerkish along with verbal English to get points across to Kanzi or Panbanisha, two of the most proficient bonobos being researched by Sue. There is an interesting phenomenon. Kanzi and Panbanisha are able to understand Yerkish and English to some extent, but Kanzi's sister is not able to due to her not being raised from birth by Sue using Yerkish and English. This results in Kanzi having to interpret English for her in an interesting way. Tamuli, some bark. Give Young Tamuli was reared by her mother and shows no comprehension of spoken English. Tamuli, Tamuli, that's some bark. Thank you, Pamanisha. Tamuli. Sometimes it seems as though Kanzi is able to act as a kind of interpreter, showing his younger Tamuli. sister what Here. the words mean. Tamuli, could you slap Kanzi? Tamuli, you. Slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. You slap Kanzi. Tamoli, could you give Kanzi a hug? <laughs> Tamoli, could you groom Kanzi? He's asking you to groom him. Look, you put your hand up there. Kanzi is also observed to be the most proficient in Yerkes, more so than Pambanisha, and is good at recognizing spoken words. Panbanisha seems to require more repetition for her to comprehend what is being said, but Kanzi is able to mostly understand at least the subject and object of a sentence spoken then. I think Yerkish is somewhat a special case. It is known that Kanzi was raised from birth as practically a human child. This predisposed him to human language, and especially English, so of course he would have an easier time comprehending it. 
I doubt Eurekush will ever be used in a similar way I have shown in the future. If other tests on bonobos or other primates regarding language happen again in the future, I imagine a different lexigram or linguistic approach may be used. Hans and Yerkish are a very special look into how our ancestors, the hominids, may have developed language. By studying Kanzi, we learn about how primates learn and understand language, but further, how we as humans came to speak and develop language, and in turn, learn about how we came to the modern day. We tried to invent a language for Kanzi that was composed only of vowel sounds, and we couldn't understand ourselves which tells you what consonants do for us. They wrap little packages around vowel sounds. They are like edges around vowel sounds, and they help us tell our words apart, where one word stops and where another word starts. And because we could do that, we could invent languages. We could utter new sounds that were discriminably different. We could go around and name all kinds of things with words that sounded different to other individuals. And I think this must have been a great turning point in the evolution of mankind. And I think if you could give chimpanzees or bonobos that same ability today, they would take off and they might follow a course that would be eerily similar to that of our own species.